G'day and welcome to Snap Happy, the photography show. I'm Jason Edwards. And I'm Maddie Claire Sloan. Jace, where are you off to this week? Well, Mads, I'm heading to the red centre of Australia to photograph some amazing landscapes. What about you? Well, something a little bit different. This is a screenshot from a documentary produced by Griffin Hammond about a unique subculture in the New York City bar scene. All this and more on today's episode of Snap Happy, the photography show. Griffin Hammond is a New York City-based documentary filmmaker. He's well known for his YouTube channel, where he posts dozens of tutorials for independent filmmakers. And, more recently, his award-winning documentary, Sriracha. It's kind of funny because, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's hot sauce, right? But I've become pretty obsessed with it. It's absolutely iconic, and I think it's completely unintentional, too. Three very distinct syllables. Sriracha. I just love that bold flavor. Oh. <laughs> it's yummy. Almost everyone loves my product. It has this cult following. I feel very proud. Thank you for making the world's greatest sauce. <laughs> Griffin, welcome to Australia. Thank you. What brings you down under? Well, I'm doing a, a series of workshops for Panasonic about the, their new camera, the GH5. I'm also here at SIMPTI, the broadcasting Beautiful. conference. Oh, yeah. yeah. How did you get started? Well, I was on YouTube like a normal person, but then I actually got a job at YouTube. Okay. So that helped. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I ran a channel for a long time called Indie Mogul, right. where I made tutorial videos about filmmaking. And after I did that, naturally a lot of those people came and followed me to my personal channel, where I still do that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, of course. And filmmaking, and documentary filmmaking in particular is your thing. Yeah. What drew you towards that? Well, I like to learn a lot. I like to grow as a filmmaker, and I've at some point along the way I decided I need to share what I'm learning, otherwise it's kind of wasted on just me. <laughs> and also you can learn a lot more by forcing yourself to teach it. That's true. Yeah. And I think that YouTube benefits from tutorial videos. I mean, people go to YouTube to learn, yep. and so I've, I think that's how I've found an audience, because people appreciate that kind of content. They do. Now, you've been using the Panasonic range for quite some time. Yeah. So how did you get started with all this, with Panasonic? Well, I bought the GH1, yep. the Lumix GH1 in 2010, just because back then I was trying to make the jump to high definition video and it was the cheapest way to do it. I could get a, a body, a lens, a microphone, an audio recorder for like half of what it would cost to get a HD camcorder. And so I did that just to save money, but I liked the camera. I was getting high quality stuff out of it. Got the GH2, the GH3, the GH4. Yeah. <laughs> camera then, on the 5? <laughs> yeah. Well, and before I got to the 5, Panasonic noticed that I've been making all these tutorial we videos. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> and they asked me if I wanted to have the GH5 before anyone. So you got to review it? More than that, I got to spend a lot of time with it. I shot a short film called Hand Cut, just awesome. like a little short documentary with it. And uh, I get to be the global brand ambassador for it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's a camera I use almost every day for professional projects, and it has every tool I need. I mean, I already liked the GH4. Yeah. Like the GH4, so it's it shoots. It's just an easy transition to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it shoots 4K, but now it does it in 60 frames per second. They added in body image stabilization, they added a lot of cool features. So, Hank, that's your latest project yeah. in New York City. Tell us about this. I don't know if they have this here, like the super crystal clear ice in cocktails. No, it's, it's only a New York City thing. <laughs> very popular in New York. And I was just curious, like, how do they do that? How do they get it so nice and perfectly clear? So I made a film about these ice makers in New York in cocktail bars. And I shot it in 4K 60p, because that's something the GH5 can do. And you could shoot 60 to go slow motion, but I actually shot in 60 frames to deliver in, that's the output format. But the, the consequence was that I'm shooting with half as much light, because I'm shooting with double the frames that I normally would, and I'm shooting in dark bars. So it's already really low light situation. You can't have to turn the lights off. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I used my most powerful primes. I used a 42.5 F12, and I used a 12 millimeter F14 and never needed to go above like 1600 ISO, it looked great. Well, it is just a camera that works well for my style, and I think the biggest thing is probably the size, just that it's lightweight yes. compared to some of their larger camcorders and cinema cameras. I just find that when I show up with a small amount of gear, one, it doesn't kill my back, mm -hmm. but I'm able to get access that I might not otherwise. Like, I'm able to walk onto red carpet events, yeah. and no one knows that I have a professional <laughs> camera. Well, they will now yeah. when they watch this. I found Tommy a couple of years ago in the small Australian country town of Canoundra. 
As a documentary photographer, for a change, I like to hear some good news and a reminder that humour and much kindness does exist on this earth. Good morning, how are you today? He was obviously not the typical country local. Here he was making the farmers and townspeople laugh and smile just by being himself. So I instinctively knew this larger than life character had a special gift and a story worth telling. I like making people happy, always have done. When I came to this town, it was very strange for them to have a person like me, a little bit flamboyant, loves drag and basically take over. So once they dropped their guard and realised that I was harmless, that I was trying to do something good for them, they worked with me. Tommy has raised over a million dollars in his lifetime for charity. It's brought the town together. With its true power hidden in its featherweight body, this Fuji XF 23mm lenses quick focusing and superbly sharp images means that my focus is where it should be, with Tommy. Just hand me that egg bowl, see the bowl with the eggs in it, please. Yeah. We lost a couple of really beautiful young people in really horrendous circumstances. We lost 19 kids. Three years. Ah. It was the worst thing, it was like the devil was in this town. I made all these and I went up and down the main street giving muffins to everybody, which just for a minute, it just cheered them up. To me, it's most important to have rapport, to keep it simple and to pay attention to the composition of the image. If I'm truthful to myself, what drives me to document someone's life is a desire to help make this world a more kinder and softer place. How amazing is it that this little piece of equipment that I carry in my hand has the power to change lives? I can come to the end of my life and say, well, you know, I did something important, you know, and I did something genuinely good. Thank you so much. You say what you want to say about the gay thing and the dressing up, but when it comes down to it, I actually did some good stuff, and I'm real happy about that. Hammond, I'm a documentary filmmaker, and this is what's in my kit. I'm using the Think Tank Perception Pro backpack. I actually have a Me Photo travel tripod on the outside. And inside, I'm carrying two camera bodies and six lenses. Right now, I'm using two Panasonic GH5 bodies. And my favorite lens is the 12 to 35. It's an f2.8 lens, just a great documentary lens, really good for run and gun filmmaking. I also have a couple primes that I really like the 42.5 F12, and on my other camera body right now, I have the 12 millimeter F14, so both really great in low light. I have the 7 to 14 that I use as a time-lapse lens, very wide angle, uh, and actually I've sliced off part of the lens hood just so that I could get my ND filter really close. When I shoot time-lapses, I like to use a half-second shutter, so I need a really heavy 1000X ND filter. I also have a 35 to 100. I don't use that much, but sometimes I shoot events and I need that extra zoom. And then I have this uh, Lumix 25 millimeter. It's an F1.4, just a really nice portrait lens. Everything else in here is lighting and audio. I carry around a Rode NTG3 microphone, shotgun microphone. I actually have it in an old Asden shock mount. And then I have a few audio solutions. I can either record my audio onto a Zoom H5 recorder, or Panasonic just made a new feature for the GH5, this XLR1 adapter. This goes right on top of the camera on the hot shoe and lets you plug XLR mics right in. I also have a lav mic in case I need it, but I always prefer the sound of a, a shotgun mic. I guess lastly here, I have a couple loom cubes, these little tiny lights in case I need some lighting. Usually I'm just looking for good sunlight to shoot with. And then one of my favorite pieces of filmmaking technology, I carry several of these, they're called the Pedco Ultra Clamp. And I can mount a light on one of these, it's a tripod mount, or even the camera. The camera's lightweight enough that I can use this in a pinch as a tripod. Let's mount this, clamp this thing to a chair or a table or something, and now 
I have another way to mount the camera. I'm Griffin Hammond, and that's what's in my kit. We've just arrived in the red centre of Australia, and over the coming weeks, we're going to explore and photograph the landscapes, events and people that make this part of the world truly unique. We begin our adventure at one of Australia's most iconic sites. The Anarnu people have lived in this area for tens of thousands of years, and Uluru has significant spiritual value in their culture. Everyone who visits Uluru wants that classic sunset shot. And why wouldn't you? Look at the scene behind me. But you need to get there early because there are a lot of people. You need to find a spot and you need to set up and wait. Be a little bit patient. But when the sun goes down, don't disappear immediately because sometimes the best light happens about 15 minutes after sunset. iPhones are the scourge of the modern day professional photographer. But at the same point in time, they're magnificent pieces of technology. And this is one of those locations where you can get a wonderful, wonderful image using your phone. Don't be afraid to experiment. I've taken several portrait frames today where I've had the rock quite low in the frame. And also several landscape frames where the rock has been very, very low in the frame using the enormous outback sky. But you can also zoom in. Don't forget, just two fingers, tap and spread so you can get close-ups of the rock as well. If your exposure is a little bit light, just tap the screen until you see the sun and drag the sun down and it will alter the exposure. But seriously, these are wonderful tools for anyone who wants to take a great photograph. So get out here and give it a shot. The Ananu, the traditional owners of this area, have a genuine interest in how the images of the rock are portrayed and used. So if you wish to come here and photograph for commercial purposes, you're going to need a permit. Give yourself some time so you can go through the process without too much stress. We continue our journey through the Red Centre to the spectacular Wataka National Park. It's only a few hours north from Uluru and the drive allows you to really soak up the beautiful desert landscape. We have arrived at Kings Canyon Resort, which is the perfect base camp for our time here. So obviously hiking is such an important part of what you do here at the park, but what other activities are there? You can also do kark Aboriginal tours, helicopter flights, or I guess chill out and enjoy the scenery. Great for photography too, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, sunsets and sunrises, absolutely amazing. I'm going to do the south wall today. What can I expect to see? I think it surprises a lot of people how much greenery we have around here. But once you get to the end and you see the canyon itself, I think you'll be absolutely blown away. Looking forward to it. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you. This is the magnificent Kings Canyon and the photographic opportunities here are almost limitless. Always look for the shapes and the contrast. I mean, this sandstone reflects light like you cannot imagine. And look for the textures. This national park is a haven for reptiles and birds. And already on this hike, I've seen several species of lizard, snake, and numerous birds of prey. They're there, you just have to spend a little bit of time looking for them. Some of my favourite images I've ever taken in the desert usually involve big skies, enormous cloud banks if they're there, or sometimes just the vast expanse of blue. Don't be afraid to use this incorporated in your compositions because after all, the landscape out here can be quite flat. The gorge is really deep and it shelters a pocket of forest. And in that forest, there's pools full of water. There's lots of reflections and cycads and also birds and mammals. So take the time to explore the lower levels as well as the escarpment. This desert region is beautiful, but it's also really remote. So you need to be careful. It would be easy to hurt yourself if you weren't concentrating, but enjoy this spectacular ancient landscape. We head back down to the desert plain, but we need to move fast as I want to capture a different perspective of the canyon. I've met up with Dave from Professional Helicopter Services. Looking forward to going up in the helo, what are we going to see? So we're going to shoot up uh, straight into the canyon there. We'll buzz around the canyon a couple of times, having a good look down into that. And also the really beautiful uh, Garden of Eden, which is sort of up the back of the canyon itself. Nice big waterhole. Uh, then we'll fly across the top of the George Gill Range up there, uh, having a look down into the creek and then wrap around Carmichael's Crag and Dingo Pups and back down here. Really nice flight. I'm sure the view is very different from the air and great for photography. Oh, definitely, yeah. Look, especially uh, flying around late in the afternoon like this, you get some really nice light hitting all the different sandstones. 
uh, really beautiful up there for sure. For convenience, I prefer using two zoom lenses on two separate bodies. Generally speaking, a 14 to 24 millimetre paired up with a 70 to 200 millimetre for close-ups. Use the fast shutter speed, and although this may seem obvious, it's necessary to mention. In order to avoid any kind of motion blur, maybe start with a shutter speed of at least 1 500th of a second, an aperture of f4, and a minimum ISO setting of 320. If you feel comfortable, experiment with your exposure compensation, increasing it or decreasing it. Turn on the vibration reduction in your lens and body if you have it. Be sure to tether the camera to yourself or to the vehicle you're working from and remove the lens hood so that you can get closer to the glass and reduce reflections. Don't be too concerned about the weather and definitely don't pray for good weather. I mean, look at our conditions today. The light's quite flat, but we've got sheets of rain falling down across the desert and in the distance you can see the haze of a storm coming in. Some of the shots we captured over this vast arid desert landscape became more interesting because of the bad weather we're shooting in today. What a fantastic way to end our expedition in Kings Canyon. Now I'm going to head back to the resort for a cold drink. Happy shooting. Griffin, you've been uploading tutorials to YouTube for years now. Yeah. Can you share with our viewers today any helpful tips? Sure. Do you, Maddie, know the f-stop scale? Mm, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I found there's one really easy way to remember it. I guess the only reason you would ever need to know this is just to know that F14 is, is twice as much light as F2, which is twice as much light as F2.8. But really, all you have to remember to remember the whole thing is just the numbers 1 and 1.4, mm -hmm. and then just double both of them. So then you have you 2 and 2.8, and then double those, 4 and 5.6, and now you know the entire scale. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what else can you share with us? If you're new to filmmaking, if you're coming from photography, you can probably slow down your shutter speed. Photographers use pretty fast shutter speeds because you want sharpness. But in video, we actually want a little bit of motion blur. Yes. That relationship between frames. So there's a rule in cinema called the 180 degree rule. Okay. Which simply means that your shutter speed should be half of your frame rate. All right. So if your frame rate is 25 frames per second, you should be shooting at a 1 50th of a second shutter right. speed. And that will create an appropriate amount of motion blur. And what would be your third final tip for our viewers today? You know the thing that people say, the best camera is the one you have on you? Mm -hmm. I also think that the best microphone is the one that you have on you. Okay. I have some expensive microphones, but I don't always carry them around. Even just a phone in your pocket, if you can just get it close, any microphone, if it's close, will sound great. So if you're filming an interview like this right now, and we don't have a lavalier <laughs> microphone, just get this close, record some audio, and you can sync it up later. There you go. Yeah. That's one I use actually too. Great tip. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Griffin. Of course, yeah. And if you want to see some more tips from Griffin, head over to his website or subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for we'll having me. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Look at this. Moai statues on Rapa Nui, Easter Island in the Pacific the world's most isolated island. I've been here shooting this wonderful archaeological site and there's so much to see here. The race of people that used to live here actually became extinct and destroyed the habitat. So it's got a real warning for the rest of the world and what's happening now. So this morning the clouds came in and our dawn sort of turned into a cloud filled cluster of light. You can see there's a little bit of light on the stone at the moment and that's okay. So we worked on doing lots and lots of silhouettes. Really wide at 14mm. And then some close-ups of the faces and the profiles of the statues. So you need to be able to hold the camera steady or use a tripod. So most people travel with only a small tripod or no tripod at all. So you need to increase your ISO and become less concerned about the depth of field. So I shot a lot of stuff at f4 or f5.6 and that really worked. On a separate note, sites like this really need to be appreciated and cherished. But look, it's a blessing I've to see it. I've never shot it before. And hopefully there are a couple of frames that will show this ancient culture in what is now a basically barren island. I'll see you at the next site.
I managed to get my hands on a GH5 when I was in far north Queensland and it's a really powerful little unit. Stay tuned for my review later in the series. Now, Jace, I'm really enjoying your Around the World series. Where to next? Well, next episode, I head to Kathmandu in Nepal where I follow a very special funeral ceremony. And you? Well, I meet up with the one and only Peter Eastway who gives me some handy tips on how to take that perfect landscape shot. And we also chat about how he uses the Wycom products in his workflow. If you'd like to join the Snap Happy community, head over to snaphappytv.com where you'll find exclusive content, competitions and special offers from our partners. We'll see you next time on Snap Happy, the photography show. We've just arrived. I've <laughs> got the lens caught on the thing. Ha Da, 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 da. We'll start that without such a, a loud, loud clap.